Hello and welcome. This is an exciting time for us here in St. Rose. We have a lot happening, especially a lot happening in the area of catechesis and faith formation of our young people. Having learned a little bit about registration and getting into our, our format for this year, we want to spend some time now talking to you about what happens with our children who are in kindergarten to grade three. Over the course of the pandemic, we've tried very hard to stay connected with you, our people, with the Mass, the celebration of the Mass. Uh, we have Mass on YouTube, we have Mass on TV, we've done different formats to keep connected with you and with the parish, but now we want to focus especially on our children and what we'll do with them. So today we want to focus on what really is considered the first catechesis of our children. Everyone wants our children catechized, but the first catechesis is really the Mass. That's where catechesis happens. So we want our kids to come, experience the Mass, and that'll be the beginning of their catechesis. Without that, without that foundation, it becomes very difficult. So let's talk today about what happens in the program and in the format for kids in kindergarten to grade three. So today what I'd like to do is introduce Heidi Morton to you. Heidi has been doing our Liturgy of the Word with children here for some time. Heidi will tell you a little bit more about herself. But our Liturgy of the Word with children is taking a slightly different turn this year. We'd like to make it a bit more intensive. We'd like to involve our parents. Uh, we'd like to make sure that the first catechesis of the Eucharist really does become a real catechesis for the children. And so I'd like Heidi now to begin to tell you what will happen when the children come and how the structure of this first catechesis with the kids will, will be happening. Thank you, Father Harahan. Hello, parents. Um, catechesis for kindergarten through third grade will be with our children's Liturgy of the Word that we do every Sunday, always, and we did it and vid filmed it during the pandemic and had it on YouTube. Uh, we will now be doing it in person again with your kids. Um, we will have a tiny change in that you will bring your children downstairs right away and into Ryan Hall and we will do the uh, Children's Liturgy of the Word down there and then they'll return at the usual time after the offertory. And what we'll do with them is we will have a kid version of the readings and the responsorial psalm, uh, the gospel, and a kid-friendly homily. And it's run by myself and a couple other moms, and uh, we just so enjoy helping the children understand the gospel and build their faith formation that way. And if anybody wants to help, we'd love to talk to you too. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, Children's Liturgy of the, Word, Liturgy of the Word will still be filmed and will still be on YouTube every Sunday. And the worksheets that are posted will also be available. So it's going to continue Children's Liturgy of the Word uh, plus. We're going to do a little extra down there. All right, we look forward to meeting you and seeing your kids every Sunday. Now we'd like to talk a little bit about the fourth and fifth grades. Kindergarten to grade three will be experiencing the Liturgy of the Word as their basic catechesis. And now we'd like to think about what happens for fourth and fifth graders. Once a month, We'll invite families to be together, not only for the Mass, we want families to join us every week for Mass, but after Mass, once a month, we'll have the fourth and fifth graders experience a family catechesis experience. So we'd like the fourth and fifth graders after that Mass once a month to come, probably outside in the gathering space if we're able, and experience some form of catechesis, but we'd like our moms and dads and siblings to join with the fourth and fifth graders in coming to, to catechesis together. It's very important to experience the Mass as a family, and it's wonderful to think we can focus as a family for these couple of years specifically, and then have the family together learn something about catechesis, learn something about our faith 
and learn something that we can talk about together as a family. So we'll be doing that once a month with our fourth and fifth graders. Again, the most important catechesis is the Mass itself. That's where we never stop. That's where we want to be connected. We want to live out our relationship with God and with Jesus, but we want to experience together what it means to learn more about the faith we're believing at church. And I know many of your children from Children's Liturgy of the Word when they were younger, and now that they will be in the fourth and the fifth grade, they will be experiencing the whole, the total Mass with the whole congregation and sharing that with their families. For our sixth grade, we want to do something very creative and probably pretty exciting. We'd like to spend a whole year looking at the Bible. Each student, each child will have a Bible and will be able to find the scripture passages that we're hearing at Mass, find quotes in the Bible that we'd like to talk about with our families or our friends, or look at Bible quotes that we have a question about and learn more about them. The grade six, once again, will be at Mass every Sunday, hopefully with their families. And when moms and dads bring your families to church once a month, the sixth graders, after Mass, will meet in the gathering space and with their Bibles, will explore the Bible, the, Bi the meaning of the Bible, how to use the Bible, the significance of the Bible in our liturgy, what the Bible means for our daily lives. But sixth graders will learn a lot about the Bible. And teachers know that it's important for teaching children what the Bible means, but also how to navigate through the Bible and how to find your way through the Bible, something that will guide you for the rest of your life. So we'd like to be focused with that on our sixth graders this year. And the Bible is a really cool Bible. It's a new Bible that Sister Sandy has found, and it's not a kid's Bible, but not a serious adult Bible. It's the perfect in-between for our sixth graders and they're going to love it. As our children get older, our challenge probably gets a little bit harder. And the challenge with seventh and eighth graders and young people as they move into high school is how to keep them connected to the church, how to keep them interested. What does it mean to be followers of Jesus and disciples and how do we live this in the world? High school kids and kids in middle school are so involved in their friends groups and in the schools that they're in and in their activities. Parents know it's hard to pull them away and to get them focused on something like coming to church and thinking about faith and taking time to pray and to learn about spiritual things that they might not automatically give themselves to. What we like to do is again, have our 7th and 8th graders come to Mass every Sunday, make the Mass the center of catechesis and the heart of their experience of the church. But then, again, once a month, we'd like our 7th and 8th graders to meet in the gathering space, to form small groups, and to be joined in those small groups with parishioners, with catechists, with members of the peer leadership group, so that young people have a chance to talk and to listen. This is not really a time to teach the 7th and 8th graders as much as to talk with them, to listen to them, uh, to try and surface concerns with them that will actually impact their lives and, and make a difference in how they're living today. What we want to do is, is establish this foundation clearly in the years before they're, they're off to college, and those years come very, very quickly. These are very important times for this age group, so again, we'd like to have the 7th and 8th graders here and then after Mass, uh, once a month, we have, we'd like to have the 7th and 8th graders in our small group so that other, other teens and, and people intergenerationally can speak to our 7th and 8th graders and show them the heart of what we want to be about with our faith and the treasure that we want to pass off to them at this time in their lives. Yes, the 7th and 8th graders will have these wonderful small group meetings to learn from each other and share with each other. and. The uh, goal is they will be forming patterns of living and loving and thanking and forgiving and inclusivity and tolerance. Of course, confirmation is always an important subject. It's an important subject for families, for parents, and kids begin to think about their confirmation. So our confirmation experience this year will be, again, 
Founded and established on the basis of Mass, we want our ninth and 10th graders to be here with us at Mass. And we'd like our ninth and 10th graders to begin not just to hear about confirmation, but actually to live their confirmation. So we're going to invite the confirmation kids to be part of the overall ministry of catechesis. We want our confirmation kids to learn about their faith by sharing their faith. We want moms and dads and families to come with them to Mass and to support them in that. But after Mass, we'd like our confirmation kids to begin to be able to speak about their faith and to share their faith uh, with other people. And so uh, the ninth and 10th grade experience uh, leading us to confirmation will be a real moment for our young people to begin to be ministers and to begin to live their lives as disciples under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And they'll be given practical ways where they can do that. Again, working intergenerationally uh, with their peers, uh, with younger kids, uh, and Heidi will explain more about that. It's going to be so fun to have these confirmation candidates involved with the younger children. They're going to help us out in children's liturgy of the word, and they're going to help out with the fourth graders and the fifth graders, and, and help the sixth graders navigate the Bible and that will help them in their own uh, journey building their faith learning more about the Bible and and expressing their viewpoints and, uh, and and what's important to them regarding the church with the younger children and with confirmation it's it's true we want the kids to jump in and to be role models and examples we also want them uh, to put into practice the idea of service. So we'll have the opportunities for service projects uh, for our young people preparing for confirmation uh, to meet the elderly and to work with them, to think of those who are sick, those who are confined, uh, people who are hungry or homeless. Service projects will be a real part of this so that living our faith is really the message about confirmation that we want our young people to understand.